Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorials Point. Now, in this series, we are going to cover another topic called Dotted Framework. In this particular video, we will go through the introductory features of .NET along with some more benefits. But in the coming videos, we will cover some more concepts in description. Now, before continuing with .NET, let's see what this .NET is all about. So this .NET framework, as it is written here, .NET is what? It is a framework. What this framework is all about? Basically, if I want to talk about the application development, a framework is something which will give me all the required tools, a predefined frame inside which I can work. When I say frame, it will give me some limitations as well. And along with the limitations, it will also provide me the required tools or structure or anything which is required for application development. So, .NET framework is a software development framework offered by Microsoft. So, particularly it's a Microsoft tool which we will use for the application development. Which types of application? Various types of applications. For example, you can start with the very basic console applications which you may have seen in C, C++ if you have gone through that. Apart from that, you can also create, create the GUI application such as the Windows applications, web applications, mobile applications and many more. Apart from that, you can also create the services like web service, WCF service and web APIs means we have a number of variety for creating the application. If I talk about the web application, we have a simple ASP.NET, we have MVC, we have Silverlight, so many tools for the particular purpose. Apart from that, you can create your own customized libraries as well. So when I say .NET framework, it will be a one-stop solution for the different requirements regarding the application development. So, obviously it's going to be a wonderful tool for you to learn, alright? Now, let's proceed and it includes library and runtime environment. Now, what does that mean? Whenever you will start writing a basic program, maybe you have done so far or maybe not, but whenever you want to start writing a basic program, you obviously need something predefined. As here, in this particular programming, we are not going to start everything from the scratch. For example, if I want to write a message, I should get something, whether a method or something, to print that particular message. So, obviously, in every programming language, we require something predefined. And that predefined things will be provided by the library. So, once we have the library, we have the required prerequisites tool, and then we can start writing a basic program. Once we are done with writing the program, what is my next goal? Obviously to see the output. That is why we have written the code. Alright. So for execution, we have something called the runtime environment. So this framework will comprise both the things that is the library as well as runtime environment. So from writing the code till the execution, everything is being provided by the framework itself. Now, if I will explain a bit more about this library, we call it Framework Class Library or in short, FCL. So this Framework Class Library is going to help you for the different purposes of application. As here you can see, it provides user interface, database connectivity, cryptography, web application development and many more. When I say many more, maybe services, maybe mobile application development or XYZ number of things. Maybe cloud computing as well. All right. So all these types of developments are possible only because of this framework class library. Because it is providing us the tools, it, because it is providing me the required classes, the methods, only then we are able to write a particular code for that type of development. And finally, when you are done with the code, as I said, the next situation is to run the code and that execution will be made by the CLR, that is Common Language Runtime. 
What does that common language mean? CLR, common language runtime, we know runtime, all right? The runtime environment we are talking about. But what is this common language? For finding the answer, let's jump to the next point that is provides language interoperability. Now that is something interesting. When I say language interoperability or language independency, anything, that simply means when you are working with .NET, .NET is a software development framework as I already discussed. It is not a programming language. But to create an application, we need to write some programs because what is an application? Application is the logical integration of programs. And for writing that particular program, you must have a programming language. But which programming language? Maybe for different frameworks, it is particular. But if I'm talking about .NET, actually there are multiple options. Maybe I'm working with C Sharp or VB.NET or Python or maybe C++ or maybe any other language list from the list. All right. That list which is provided by the common language infrastructure. All right. So we have so many languages here to write a particular code. Once we are done with that particular code maybe for example i have an application and i split that application into some smaller modules and maybe different team is working on each module which finally i want to execute all together so it is not necessary that you must write a particular code with a particular language if you know c sharp you can continue with that if there is a user if there is any developer who's comfortable in VB or VB.NET, he can continue in that itself. And by the time of execution, we can integrate them all together. All right. So at the runtime, the, all the languages will be in a common language. We will see this description in our next video where we will discuss about the compilation process and then you will come to know how this thing is possible. But the scenario is, we can write our source code in different languages and at the time of execution, they will be executed in a common language. So that will be made possible by this common language runtime. And because of that itself, this is language interoperable. Now, let's have a look on the various versions of .NET framework so far. Like here you can see from 1.0 to 4.6, we have a various versions of .NET framework. Along with that, we do have various versions of the common language runtime, starting from 1.0 to 4.0, all right? And whenever you talk about these frameworks along with the release date also, uh, the major thing is using these frameworks, I want to write a code. So who's going to give me that environment? For getting that environment, I must have some IDE, that is integrated development environment. This integrated development environment simply means, as I said earlier, like whenever you will be creating an application, you will have to break that application into some smaller modules. And finally, you'll have to integrate them all logically in a single unit, which we will call an application. If I talk about dot in framework, it provides me an IDE called Visual Studio, which is popular enough nowadays. So here you can see the different versions of .NET Framework are using different versions of Visual Studio as well. As by now, Visual Studio 2015 is the latest one on which you can also find the C Sharp tutorial, which is already live in tutorialspoint.com. And now here you can see like this version is compatible with this CLR 4.0 and .NET Framework 4.6. But what does it mean? If I have some situation, for example, I'm a developer, maybe three years back, I have created an application for a particular client who was working with Visual Studio 2010. Now I'm working on this particular version, maybe for some maintenance purpose, I want to write some code for that client itself. Can I do that? Obviously, because whenever there is a new version comes, the previous version is always compatible. All right. The backward compatibility is always there whenever I'm going through a new 
next version of the product all right so it doesn't mean like these new versions are not compatible with the previous one they do have the compatibility with the previous releases of the frameworks and obviously when i'm talking like there are new frameworks are coming why obviously they are giving us some new features like this so here you can see the stack where from the very beginning till from 2.0 itself along with the framework class library and common language runtime you are having something called the winforms asp.net and ado.net winforms are for the windows applications gui mode asp.net is a very popular tool for the web applications and ado.net for the database connectivity apart from that you can see in the next release that is 3.0 you have wpf which is some advanced thing for this uh, compatible to this winforms itself means you will again create the windows applications that is gui applications but in wpf wcf is for the uh, services like earlier in asp.net we have something asp.net web services but here we have the wcf services similarly wf and card space for some identity card kind of things all right now when we came to the 3.5 we got a very new type for making the database connectivity like earlier we used to do it by ado.net but here we got something called language integrated query and entity framework now the new thing is like in ado.net you have to go for the sql queries all right but if someone is working with vb.net or c sharp.net and maybe he is not comfortable enough or maybe some more reasons i don't want to use sql in our ado.net code so what can i do is i can integrate that query in our own programming language and we start calling it the language integrated query and the very similar thing is done with entity framework also but we will cover the complete concept of entity framework in some other video series now with 4.0 we got some another feature called parallel programming so this link become the parallel link and task parallel library now what is that basically nowadays we are having the multiple core processors but a traditional programming only uses a single core of that processor which may not give us the best execution so for achieving the best we started working on the multiple cores of the same processor parallelly and for that itself we have this task parallel library and to take it to an another level we introduce the asynchronous programming in framework 4.5 so this is how every version of dotnet keeps on giving us the new variety a new technology new concepts for implementing better now let's see some more advantages of this dotnet framework so as you can see it is object oriented programming means it supports object oriented programming that is what we are using nowadays so like the previous releases of visual studio till 6.0 were not supported the object oriented programming but now you can easily execute the oops code in your dotnet applications language independence we have already discussed a lot earlier and in the next video we are going to see how this language independence can be achieved efficient data access as in this previous slide we have already discussed like ado.net link entity framework are the various technologies that we have for accessing the data from the database or from some other data sources as well code sharing code sharing simply means about the code reusability for example you have created your own library and now you can use this particular library in your various different applications for example if you want to perform the database connectivity which we generally do in each application so rather what you can do you can write all the code in your library and then you can reuse it in your different applications all right so it will also give you the concept of code sharing or code reusability and support for services support for services like the third party tools we used to work 
Services are very much preferenced in the dotted framework. Like earlier, we had the web services, which is again not obsolete so far. We are still using it. But a better concept is WCF, which will give you some more better way to implement the services. And for creating the RESTful services, as the WCF and web services are the XML service, if you want to create a RESTful service, you can also go for the web API. So this is all being supported by a single framework that is the .NET framework. So that is all for this video. In our next video, we will see how the compilation process goes on and how can we achieve this language independence.